factor out of C. Very well put. When you factor something out, you're, you're making it that times the rest of it. Factor out of C. Uh, and that second step that he takes, from here to here, what kind of polynomial does he factor? Quadratic. Quadratic. Somewhat standard. Any questions there? What does it mean to say we factored out of C? How do we come by that conclusion? Anthony? They all have C. And then we just factor it. They have a factor of C. It's undistributed. We like to say undistributed sometimes. Uh, and if they also shared a factor of two, we would factor out that factor of two, put that outside of the parentheses, and distribute it, <coughs> okay? So if we just pick two random numbers that are only there instead of 9 and 18, odds are we wouldn't be able to factor two, it's just two random numbers. Yeah, good observation. If we just throw two random numbers, more often than not, we won't be able to factor whatever the polynomial is, quadratic or whatever. Yeah. So, majority of the time, this I mean, it depends on what the time is. If we're talking about the time in a math book, probably most of the time it'll work. In real life, when you get your real life polynomials out of the world, which are guaranteed to you, yeah, it probably won't work with random numbers. Most likely it won't work with random numbers. It's an astute observation. Any other questions? not factor these polynomials completely, or this polynomial completely, here's his work. So first, why did he circle those two groups of terms? So uh, what is your, if you were to tell somebody, here is like the most likely scenario where you're going to get factored by grouping, how would you tell someone that you're probably going to be factored by grouping? least a fifth degree polynomial with six terms because you get the five for the powers and the one constant. And uh, yeah, it could be a real bear. But it's definitely possible. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you could group them any way you want. You could group them in two groups of two, two groups of three if you have six terms. Uh, however you group them, you need the two parentheses that result to be identical. Or the three parentheses that have result. You can do three groups of two. However you can group it together, you can conceivably factor it by grouping. Um, so he did that correct scene, so why did why is he not completely factoring this polynomial? Or he can factor the n squared minus nine down to each other. What do we call that? Factoring the inverted. This n squared minus nine does that have a special kind of a it's pattern of a special name? Quadratic. It is a quadratic because it is degree two. It's a special class of quadratic. This is kind of important difference. Mm -hmm. It's a difference because it's subtraction of squares because that's n squared. This is three squared. Different squared. So we could do n plus five times n plus three times n minus three. So we could say n squared minus nine is a difference. Squares. So we can factor it for that. <coughs> Last one. Uh, so Quentin does 
does not find the solutions to this polynomial correctly, this polynomial equation correctly. So uh, what monomial does Quinton factor out of the second group? Both of these have a negative one in common. When we factor out that negative one, we get a positive g plus three, which makes it identical to this parentheses, which is what we need to do uh, factor by grouping. So he continues on, he factors the heat and factors that difference of squares. g squared minus one is g plus one times g minus one. And yet he has not solved them. What is going to need to do now in order to solve the equation? What do you mean by that? Um, find the numbers that will make the answer zero. Yeah, find numbers that you can plug in for g in any of these to make it zero. That's easy, right? This just means that this, you have to make this parentheses zero, or this one zero, or this one zero, because they're multiplying together and the result is zero. So one of them has to be zero. So we can just set this equal to zero, this equal to zero, this equal to zero, and solve them all. g could be negative one positive one, and she could be negative three. So set each, what is each of these called? This is one of them, this is another one, this is a third one. Binomials. There are binomials, binomials, that's true. What did we do to this polynomial up here? What's that? Factor. We factored it, so each of them is a factor. Factor, like three and five are factors of 15, because. 3 times 5 is 15. Well, these are all factors because this times this times this is the original polynomials for each factor. So set each factor equal to 0. Is it important that it's equal to 0? Could it be equal to 5? That would be alright if this is all this times this no. times this equals 5? No. Why not? Because then we'd need to know a couple of the g's. Yeah, you kind of have to be given the g. Why, why is it important that it's equal to zero? Because you can plug in something. Well, the next step is this, right? Why, why are we allowed to say that? So this is zero, then we say each of those equals zero? Please? Because when you plug in a number in, that will make g not zero. It would be like, you have to plug in for every g a different number, like two. If you plug two in for g, uh, you get like three times one times five. Uh, it just would take a long time to figure it out. To figure if it was equal to any other number. Yeah, but zero is special, Emily. Um, it's set equal to zero. You know, at least one of them has to be zero because zero times anything is zero. Right. And if you get zero by multiplying, the only way to do that is to have a zero that you're multiplying by. You can't do one times three times seven and get zero. If you're gonna multiply and you're gonna get zero, you have to use zero when you multiply. Um, okay, so any questions from the homework? Or the quiz? They were that happened. Did that happen? Did I answer your question? <coughs> Solving them looks exactly like factoring them, except when you're done factoring them, make sure you're equal to zero, then set each of the factors equal to zero. It made sense in class situation, but now in math class, it doesn't make sense anymore. It doesn't? No, it did. It, did. it didn't, and then it did again? Yes. Oh. It did, and then it didn't, and then it did. That's about, that's the right construct. That's about how it works. No question. Not anymore, sir. Okay, I'm just going to try to see if there's any questions. Go ahead and pass in your homework. Then we'll move on with life. Oh, yeah, life can be a real. So, um, let me just remind you of the scenario here. Uh, we found a, a piece of paper, scrap piece of paper on the floor, 
it had a piece torn off of it, and so it's a factory problem, only we have a factor to start with. We already have a factor to start with. Okay. Um, so let's run through this uh, a little quicker than before. We have some experience. What were we trying to do, first of all? Find the missing factor. Find the missing factor. There's this clearly the beginning of a factor here that uh, this person found, and we would like to recreate it. And how do we start that out? How do we say, like, we can, yeah? Um, what times x is 2x to the third? Yeah, we know that whatever this factor is, we're going to have to multiply this factor times that factor to get the original, right? Just like if we saw 15, uh, and then they factored it, and they were missing something here, we know that 3 times whatever is missing needs to be 15, so that must have been 5. So what is that thing? If we distribute the x to this thing, what would it be so that we get 2x cubed? 2x squared. 2x squared. OK. And it seems like everything's coming up roses, because we got 2x cubed. And that's exactly what we should have. OK. But then what did we did, like, discover after that? So we multiply by 2. We multiply by 2, so now we We also have to multiply by 2. And so let's see what happens then. 4x squared is what we get. Is that what we want to get? No. No, we want to get, what do we want to get? X squared. X squared. OK. So we're off, right? We're off. We're off by how much? 4x squared. By 3. We're off by 3. We need to come down 3. We need to subtract 3, right? We need to subtract 3 off of the 4x squared to get back to x squared. All right, so let's run through these first few steps in a different form, the form of long division or column okay, So I think by doing it this way, the long division makes a whole lot more sense. All right, so first, we said we know we have to multiply this by whatever this comes out to be. We have to multiply this to get 2x cubed. So x times 2x squared gives us the 2x cubed. We also then have to multiply the 2x squared by the 2, which gives us 4x squared. Uh, and we realize we need to come down by 3x squared in order to be back to the x squared, right? Because we're off by 3x squared. All right, so let's look at the long division. I'm sure you've seen long division before. You've done it. It's probably been a while since you've done long division. Okay. We want to divide x plus 2 into 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 2. Whether it's polynomials or numbers, we're still asking the same question. This number up here, what does it, or polynomial, what does it have to be so that I can multiply this by that and get to this? That's what the division is asking. What is that thing that I can multiply by the thing that I'm trying to you know, get? A lot of dividing and things. Right. So the first question is, what do I need to multiply x by to get 2x cubed? Because we realize that other factor is going to get x to be distributed to it. So we put uh, the 2x squared right there. It's all the same questions, all the same answers, just a different looking format. Okay. So the next thing we did was to say, kind of check that it, it did do what we wanted it to do in getting 2x cubed. It did. It got 2x cubed when we multiplied it by x. When you distribute the 2x cubed or 2x squared to the 2, you get 4x squared. And you can see at, at this point, they're lined up directly. You can see 4x squared is not x squared. x squared is what you were trying to get. Right? So to figure out what the difference is, the difference is subtraction. So we subtract everything that we see here. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0. That's exactly what it should be, because that's, that's the whole motivation behind getting 2x squared up here. Uh, and x squared minus 4x squared is negative 3x squared. That's what we need to take off of 4x squared to get back to x squared. Or over here, we can subtract 3x squared from 4x squared to get the x squared. <coughs> so we come back over here, and our idea is to get a minus 3x squared. What goes next so that we can get a minus 3x squared? We put here so that when we distribute the x to it, we'll get that minus 3x squared. Minus 3x. Minus 3x. Minus 3x. x times minus 3x is minus 3x squared, just like we wanted to get. Right? This is like a prediction. This is what we wanted to get. Okay. 
But we also have to distribute the two. So in addition, we get negative 6x, right? which is not quite what we want. Let's see what that looks like in long division. We say we want the negative 3x squared, so we're going to put a negative 3x here, because if we distribute the 3x to the x, we get negative 3x squared. Okay. We show just that. Negative 3x squared, we get exactly what we were aiming for. Minus 3x times 2, we get the negative 6x. Right? Let's compare it to what we want. We bring down the negative 5x. That's not what we want. We're off by, well, negative 5x minus a negative 6x. So it's negative 5x plus 6x. That's x, just a single x. Or if we come over here, look, we wanted to get a negative 5x. We got a negative 6x when we did 2 times negative 3x. So if we could add an x, that would get us, get us back on target, back to the negative 5x that we wanted. That's what this is. That subtraction right there is just us saying, how far off are we from the target we were going for? So we're going to multiply, we're going to put here, so that when we distribute it to x, we get x. So we just put 1. 1 times x is x. And here's the part where we just kind of cross our fingers and hope it works out. 1 times 2 is 2. What were we trying to get? We were trying to get 2. So it worked out just, just right. We subtract it, we get nothing left over. Nothing needs to be divided by x plus 2 anymore. Same thing over here. If we want to get that x, we need to put a 1. 1 times x is x. 1 times 2 is 2. If we collect like terms, we get the original. So long division is just this way of <coughs> algorithmizing this over here, right? It makes a set of steps. It's a set of steps. It's not it's, uh, it's a set of steps to do that, to a ask and answer the right questions. What do we need to multiply by? What do we get? How far off are we? What do we need to get? What do we actually get? How far off are we? That's what that whole process looks like. So just to practice a little bit, um, I'm going to write it up here so that it's practice. So I'm just going to have you practice. Um, just do this long division. And I'm going to leave this so you can compare and, and uh, follow along as an example. So I want you to divide x cubed plus 6x squared plus 5x minus 12 by x plus 4. Then we have to do it by long division. Um, so you have to, if you could, if this makes more sense to you, that's all we're really doing is asking those questions in this regimented, prescribed way. So if you can do it this way, feel free. Just try to show your work. Because it's no, it's really no different from this. Okay, so step one is really a question. What question are we asking? What times x plus four is that? True. That's the overall question. And then to piece it together little by little, the first question is x times similar. Times what? Times How do you get x cubed when what times x gives you x cubed? Okay. We know that whatever this is is going to be that other factor that we're going to multiply x plus 4 by to get this whole thing. So the first part needs to be x cubed. So x squared is that thing that you multiply x to get x cubed. So slowly we're building up this other factor that when we distribute the two factors together, we get the original. Okay. So the next part is to like test it out. So what do we get when we multiply this factor by the small part of the factor that we have so far? Okay. So we have x squared. So we distribute the x squared to the x, we get x cubed. If we didn't get x cubed, we did something wrong because that's what we were trying to get in the first place. Then we know that we're going to have to distribute x squared to 4 as well. So we see what happens there. We get 4x squared. 
then we're off by how much? That's why we subtract. We're off by 2x squared. We need 2x squared more than what we're getting right now to get up to 6x squared. We need to add 2x squared to 4x squared to get to 6x squared. So where's that 2x squared going to come from? 2x. We can add on a 2x. Right? We can get an x squared by 4 times uh, an x squared or by an x factor times an x. So an x times x equals your x squared. So we'll add on a 2x. 2x times x will give us 2x squared, just like we wanted. Okay, and then 2x times 4 is 8x. What were we shooting for? 5x. We were shooting for 5x. We can bring that down, so just so we can look at them right next to each other. But we're off. We have too much or too little? Too much. Too many x's. We have 8. We want 5. So find the difference. Negative 3x. We need to subtract 3x from the 8x to get the 5x that we wanted. Where are we going to get that negative 3x from? Mm -hmm. Put a negative 3 here so that we can distribute it. Yeah. Plus 4. Negative 3 times x gives us negative 3x. Negative 3 times 4 gives us minus 12. What are we going for? 12. Perfect. So if it doesn't, if, if it were to just not work, yeah. and if like everything worked up until that last, that that last thing, would, would we just put like a little r and just write a number there? Yeah. For, for a short time of maybe half a second, and then we go on to write the final answer. Okay, so this is a remainder of zero, which means that if I multiply x plus four times the thing that I see up there, disregarding the r zero, I would get the thing inside of the of the bracket there. So if if, we, if it wasn't twelve, it was like thirteen. Would you put remainder of one? Uh, if it was thirteen instead of negative twelve. Yeah. Negative thirteen. Uh, then we would have. Negative, negative, one. negative one. Yeah, we would still need a negative one to subtract off of the negative twelve to get to negative thirteen. So would we put that outside? Wait, so do you have an example of one that wouldn't work out then? Sure, but I want to start with the ones that work out nicely. Okay. But we're definitely we'll get into ones that have remainders of them. Okay. Okay. So will we always use remainders after this point? Or will we eventually then stop using? Them? Uh, we're gonna look at remainders so that we're familiar with remainders, but. Most of the time, outside of this section, we'll have things that don't have remainders. So it'll just work out magically. Don't work out magically. Just like the world. Yeah. Okay. Inside this book, the world is like a, a big McDonald's ball pit. It's safe. It's cushy. No one's going to get hurt. Actually, it's I not too deep. Okay, <laughs> not too deep. It's, it's fun. It's, so everything's covered in foam, and everybody's safe. Okay, outside in the real world, we have polynomials that you want to solve. They're much more difficult. Okay. Um, I read that those cushy ball pits a lot of times had like needles and stuff in the ball pits. A lot of times? Well, like, so no, there's only, there's only, only one time. Times. They, 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 don't, they don't actually like take the balls out and clean the bottom, so it's actually really gross at the bottom. And I believe, I didn't say it was not gross, but that was sick. And I don't think there's a lot of needles. <laughs> well, there's only one. Maybe a lot of like yippy. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. And and that's why you want to see yippy in here, right? right? It's a little bit yippy. Yeah, like other people have had these books before us. I find really terrible stuff. That's bad. It's very sad. Um, okay, so long division. Let's say we are pretty good. Okay? We're maybe not experts, but we are surviving. We're, we're not novices. We're amateurs. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing with something else. Not called long division, but synthetic division. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Synthetic? Synthetic substitution? Yeah. Yeah, substitution. It's exactly the same process. And okay. what's the difference? Well, so in synthetic substitution, you found like some number like 12 at the end. And that was, so the number that you put to the side was the x, and the number that you got out was the y, right? That's still true. Um, but in the case of synthetic substitution, you got all those numbers, and they didn't, you didn't really consider them. They didn't matter. Just that last number mattered. Now we're going to find out what those other numbers are. They're actually the other factor that we were looking for. Okay. 
So it looks exactly the same. We take this guy, we put the coefficients, making sure that we put zeros as placeholders if needed, which in this one they're not needed. We got a one, a six, a five, and a negative 12. So the reason we can use synthetic substitution, and I realize I haven't shown you exactly how it looks quite yet, but the, the reason we can use it is we notice this, this long division thing, it kind of takes a long time, it takes up a lot of space, and you know, it really doesn't, it really comes down to what this number is, isn't it? Just, yeah. yeah, this is the one that determines like what's gonna come out of the next step and what you're gonna have to do. Because like, the number whatever it is here always just gets multiplied by this one x. Okay, whether you agree with me or you see it or you, or you don't. When this number out here in front of, of x is one, then we can use synthetic division. If it's not a one, then we can't. So if it was like 2x plus 4, synthetic division would not work. So in the case where you have x plus 4 or x minus 6 or just x and something else, we can use synthetic substitution. Just synthetic division. Okay. So here's the thing. We want to divide by x plus 4. If we put a 4 here, well, we'd bring down this 1, we'd multiply, and then we would subtract, right? Just like this over here, subtract and then subtract and subtract. So instead of that, we'll just make this a negative four, and then we'll add. Right, so instead of subtracting at each step, we'll just make it a negative, and we'll add it together, and that'll take care of that. Okay, so we start with one. Notice that one, one x squared. It's the beginning of the whole thing. Uh, negative four times one is negative four. We add, and we get two. 2x. Multiply negative 4 by 2, we get negative 8, negative 3, negative 3, the constant. And negative 4 times negative 3 is 12. Add those together, we get a 0 remainder. The result is x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, so this is always your remainder. In this case, it was 0. This is your constant. This is your x, this is your x squared. If we were doing it like a bigger division problem, we'd go x cubed and x plus 4. Oh yeah, we should start here at your, your remainder. This is your constant. But if there are two x, constants, x squared. There won't be two constants. So it will always be in that form, x squared and then an x and then the constant? I would say work from right to left. Because this is definitely always your remainder, then your constant, then your x, then your x squared. Because if we did something where the result came out to be an x to the third, it would okay. not work out so well. It's not always going to start at x squared, but it will always start on the right side of the remainder. Okay. Did that answer your question? So it only works if the leading coefficient is one. Uh, of this? Yeah. No. It could be anything. It only works. If this is one, if the thing you're dividing by is a linear factor, meaning it's x to the first power, it's a linear factor with a leading coefficient of one. Okay, so anything that looks like anything that looks like x minus something, that's something to be positive or it can be negative. What if it's x plus? Then it's a minus a negative. Whatever that question mark is, whatever you're subtracting would be negative, and then that would equate to adding. Okay. <coughs> Fun. Okay. All right, so notice that this number that I put here was the opposite of the plus 4 that you see there. It's plus 4, negative 4. process that it is, we're going to come out with a remainder of something other than zero. So the more it doesn't come out nicely, but you're going to well, do your best to make sense of it, and if you don't quite get it, then that's what we'll do when we work together after that. Um, this is number 11. Using synthetic division, do this. Have zero.
zero placeholders if needed, but we do have x squared, x to the first, and a constant, so we're good to go there. So five times two is 10, the difference between the one sum of these two is three, and five times three is 15, and 25. Remember, this is always the remainder, and so this time, we come out with a remainder of 25. So we need to make sense of uh, what, how do we write the answer? We don't just write remainder 25, okay? That's way back in the first days of learning long division and you wrote remainder three or whatever when you did some long division of numbers. Worst day of your life. Worst, worst day of your life. Sorry. Started crying. This is your remainder. This is your, what is this? Constant. The constant, this would be X term, and you know, we just keep working our way up like that if we had any more terms, but we don't. So we're going to write the result of this. Okay? So the result is 2x, that's not a 2, 2x plus 3. I don't know what in the world does that remainder mean. It means 25 just is there. It stopped, and nothing happened to it. Right? All the, the, the rest of the numbers that have come out of here, we have involved in the synthetic division process in 25. We haven't dealt with it. We haven't divided it by, what are we dividing by? X minus five. X minus five. Okay. So 25 still needs to be divided by X minus five. And that's how we write it. It's just the, the last piece. Okay. If we were to do 27, yeah, let's do um, uh, 39 divided by 6. Well, 6 goes into 39 six, six, times. six times with a remainder of 3. three. Right? Does that mean if this is 5? If five were x, then we would be dividing by zero. Uh, yeah, that mean the original division <coughs> problem would be I mean, x can't be five in that scenario. Right. And you have a five. Well, there's no solution. There's not an equation, so we're not solving anything yet. We're just dividing. Okay. Um, this remainder three means that thirty-nine divided by six is six and three-sixths, or six and one-third, or one-half, sorry, six and a half. Well, it's the same kind of idea here. Two x plus three plus 25 divided by the divisor, the original divisor. you um, practice again, and then I'll show you kind of how to make sense of this remainder in another way. So, these long division on 16, or sorry, not long division, synthetic division. zero that needs to go in there. Good, good. All right, Get, just a reminder, remember, think about that. Are you missing an x term? Is, is there, if we were to go down from, by the powers of x, uh, are we skipping one? And we're skipping x squared, so a zero goes right there. You got one x cubed plus zero x squared minus four x plus six. We're dividing by x plus 3, so we put a negative 3 there. That just takes care of that subtraction part. Um, so we don't actually just uh, need to subtract. We can make that negative and then just add. It's a little bit easier. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3, 9, 5, 15. Negative 15, negative uh, 9. Constant, 
x, x squared, and on and on and on, as many terms as we have. Okay, so the result of this is uh, x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus what? 9. 9 over x plus 3. This divided by this, well, if, if this divided by this equals this, by definition, x plus 3 times x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus 9 over x plus 3 is going to be equal to x squared minus 4x plus 6. Can you um, reduce 9 over x plus 3, or is that just something you can't do? Yeah. You cannot. Um, the reason is you probably want to do this, right? Yeah. Okay. But okay, let's take a, an example with numbers. Um, say nine over twelve. We we simplify that. We cross out the nine and the twelve. Why? They have a what of three? Uh, multiple of three. No, you yeah, had it. Yeah. Factor. Yeah, the factor of three. You had it. Factor of three. This is three times three. This is three times four, right? Because I can write this as three times three, and this has three times four times. Okay. But if we have nine over x plus three, we want to cancel out a factor of three. So we need to cancel out a factor of three in the numerator. Is the numerator have a factor of three? It does, 3 times 3. Does the denominator have a factor of 3? <laughs> it doesn't. It has, a, it has a 3 added in it, but to say it has a factor of 3 means that we can write it as 3 times something else. So 3 times something would need to be x plus 3. Well, we, we can put a 1 there, 3 times 1 is 3, but 3 times what is x? Not anything that we really want to see. If we did x over 3, that would work, but we don't, that's not any better. Now we got a fraction of a fraction. Be careful when you're canceling like that. Um, be careful that you don't do that. <coughs> and I have right here an example of that happening. I'm just crossing out things like that because you see they're the same, and this is the new thing. And uh, and this little this little kitten right here. Every time you try to do that, you surprise a little bit. The more you do it, the more she comes. It gets more sad. Okay. Um, that is strong as a kitten. No, that's how kittens are. It's so almost like kittens are strong, so it's still a strong kitten. Do you accept people? Okay. Um, well, it should be pretty clear that if we were to multiply all this out, uh, we would just get. Um, you would get, well, we're going to get the x cubed plus 0x squared minus 4x, but we're not going to get plus 6. <coughs> if we were to distribute this x, we'd get x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x squared. Okay, and then uh, bring the, uh, let's see, x plus 3, minus 3x squared, plus 3x squared, uh, minus 9x plus 5x. Okay. Uh, so we've got the x cubed plus 0x squared minus 4x. Okay, and that's just up until that point. Okay. What we want to get is plus uh, oh, plus 5x, plus 15. 3 times 5 is our 15. But we wanted to get 6. We didn't get 6, we got 15. That's where the remainder comes in. We take this whole thing now, x plus 3 times 
this whole thing, let me show you what that looks like, x plus 3 times negative 9 over x plus 3. What happens when we multiply these together? Both have a factor of x plus 3, the whole thing. Okay. Put anything you like in for x, you're going to see. Put a 5 there, 5 plus 3, that's 8. 5 plus 3, that's 8. They've got an 8 and an 8. They have a common factor, whatever it is. So x plus 3 cancels out, and we're left with negative 9. So if you distribute this to the remainder, then we get a minus 9. So we go back down to 6, like we want. A lot of numbers, yeah. So there's a couple of examples where we wind up with remainders that are not zero. They're non-zero remainders. Um, but most of the time, what we want to wind up with is the zero remainders. Um, let me show you why. This comes to the, uh, the remainder and factor theorems. Okay? So, Let's say we're just given a problem that uh, we are asked to divide. So uh, 25, we're asked to divide x cubed plus 2x squared minus 51x plus 108. We're asked in a roundabout way to divide by x plus 9. So we're supposed to divide them. Can we uh, conveniently use synthetic division to do that? Yeah. Why can't we? There's not a number in front of x, and x is to the first power. Right. One x to the first. So we can use synthetic division. So go ahead and write that out. Uh, do, you, do you want to use synthetic division use it, or do you like long division use long division? recommend synthetic division because it's pretty quick. So you can use that on any problem as long as the x, there's no number in front of the x to the first power. Yeah, as long as it's 1x to the first power, and as long as it doesn't specifically ask you to use long division. Okay. But any other time where it's up to you, yes. So when we divided x cubed plus 2x over the number 9 by x plus 9, what did we get? x squared minus 7x plus 12. Okay. That was uh, the result. That's the quotient. Right? When we divide those two things, the result of division is called the quotient. So that's the quotient of these two guys here. Now what's going to happen if I take this and multiply it by x plus 9? That first thing right there. So this is a, a mere definition thing. If I multiply this by this, I get this. And ask a question here, it might sound really vague, it might be a bad question, but maybe someone will pick up on what I'm trying to say. If I multiply this by that and get this, then What's this thing's relationship to this thing? That following over the following. It's a factor. It's a factor. That's a mere definition of a factor. If I can multiply this by something else and get this, that's a factor of this. Okay? And also, since I can multiply this by that, it's also a factor of this thing. 
So by being given the x plus 9, which uh, whether it just happens to turn out to be a factor or you're told it's a factor from the beginning, uh, we now have a, a, a factor form of the original. Now, why did it turn out that, that my answer, how do I know that, that my answer turns out to be a factor of the original polynomial? What about the very end of the process tells me it's a factor? Yeah. There's nothing left. I don't, I don't have that little fraction-y piece left over that I have to multiply by. I don't get a negative 9 over x plus 3. There is no remainder. So this nice, clean thing without a remainder is a factor of the original thing. And on top of that, could we take this and factor it further? Let's say maybe. Let's look into it. X plus 9. Three and four. Three and four. Should be negative three, negative four. X minus three. X minus four. Yeah, that worked out. It turns out that the result quotient is a quadratic that we have to be able to factor. So uh, now, if, like we're going to cover this x plus 9 here, forget about that. If I said you just to factor that original thing, how, how would you try, given our experience in the previous section, 5.4? What would you try to factor this third degree polynomial? Just grouping. Okay, four terms. Try grouping. All right. Is that going to work? Mm -hmm. You know, write it out yourself. You will not get identical parentheses uh, when you factor out an x squared from here. And I don't know what out of those two is. 108 is not divisible by 51. That's 51 prime. What's that? It's divisible by 3 at least. Right? 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 divisible by 3. So it should be divisible by 3. 3 times 17. 17. 3 and 17 are both prime. Um, 108 is divisible by 3 as well. It's just not, the parentheses aren't going to work out the way we need it to factor by grouping. But it's still a factorable uh, polynomial. And if we're given the factor x plus 9, we can find the other two factors. And the same is true if we were given x minus 4 to start with. We'd find a quadratic that factors down into these. If we were given x minus 3 to start with, we'd find a quadratic that factors down to x plus 9 times x minus 4. So being given a factor at the beginning, if you want to find the other factors, just do the division divided by whatever you're given, and then the results should be factors. <coughs> so, let's see, the, um, I guess the, really the sum of the, of the remainder and the factor theorems, what they are specifically doesn't matter all that much, but if you come out with a remainder of zero, you know that this is a factor of the original polynomial. and said, set this equal to zero. What would be the solutions to this polynomial equation? We have all times, three, four. Negative nine, if you put negative nine in there, you'll get a zero. Zero times all that stuff is zero. Three minus three is zero. Zero times all that stuff is zero. Four minus four is zero. Zero times all that stuff is zero. Okay. We set each one of those factors equal to zero and solve. Then we have the solutions uh, to this equation. So. Uh, x plus 9 is a factor, it means that what's a 0? If I tell you that x plus 9 is a factor, what automatically do you know is a 0? What number did you plug into that negative 9? Negative 9 is a 0. So x plus 9 is a factor. 
is the same thing as saying negative 9 is a 0. Okay. Saying negative 9 is a 0 means take a negative 9, plug it in for x, it makes the whole thing 0, it makes y 0. So I can tell you, here's this, quadru this, uh, this polynomial, and here's a factor of this polynomial. Find the other factors, compute the division, and you get back to the result. You can also say it in this way. Here's this polynomial, this third degree polynomial, and negative 3 is a 0. It's a 0. What does it mean to say negative 3 is a 0? Well, yeah, that's, that's an implication. What, what's a factor? X plus 3. Okay, we gotta, we got to figure a factor that when you plug negative 3 into it, you get a 0. Because right? 0 times the other factor will give you 0. So negative 3 is a 0, means that x plus 3 is a factor. So now we're back to a problem we've seen before. Now x plus 3 is a factor. We can divide by x plus 3. It's that synthetic division. And can we find the rest of the zeros? Let's see here probably. We're in a math book, and the math book rules is nice and cushy. That's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to find the other zeros of this polynomial. You've got negative 3 is one of them, so we then by implication say x plus 3 is a factor. Divide, factor, set equal to 0. Okay. So remember that the process for synthetic substitution and synthetic division are identical. Like the set of steps are the same. Okay. So depending on which way we look at it, the result is uh, kind of different, but kind of the same. Like the implication is the same. If we think of this as synthetic division, we have this negative three here because x plus three is supposedly a factor of this uh, of this polynomial, and we put the opposite of three here. So if it's a factor, we should come out with what here? As zero. a remainder, we should come out with a zero remainder, so that we can just multiply those two nice-looking factors together and get the original polynomial. If we think of negative 3 as the number that we're substituting in for x, using synthetic substitution, okay, if negative 3 is a 0, then what should we get at the end? 0. Okay. So if you get a 0 remainder, that means it must be a factor. Okay. If it's a factor, it must mean there's a 0 remainder. It must be that the output is 0. So let's go hand in hand. By hand in hand, I mean if negative 3 is a 0, then x plus 3 is a factor. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Okay, negative 5 is 15. Uh, negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 6 is 18. And then 0. So now we know that x plus 3 times x squared minus 5x minus 6. And you're likely to convert from our remainder to our constant to our x to our x squared. <coughs> that equals the original. this a further. We're going to set this equal to zero, of course, because we're trying to find all of the zeros. Minus three and plus two. Minus three and plus two gives us negative one. Yeah. That gives us negative one, so negative it does give us negative six. So if we do negative six, positive one, that was a little tricky because it just so happens that 3 and 2 are 5. So if they had both been positives, then, then that would have worked. Yeah. Uh, or if this was a positive, then this is a negative, a negative 3 and negative 2. So how do we find those zeros? No, 
could kind of skip over this and say, oh, it's the opposite of this. But I never want to just skip over that and then have it fail you in the future because it definitely could. I've seen it happen a million times. <laughs> Tragic every time. A negative one. So we found three zeros for a degree three, negative three, six, and negative. So whether I give you a polynomial and a factor, you can find the other factors. Or a polynomial and a zero, you can find the other zeros. Or a polynomial and a solution to the equation polynomial equals zero, you can find the other solutions. It's the same thing as saying uh, the zeros. Practice time in.